Hey guys, very crudely yours here. Um, this week I'm going to uh, review a film that, I, and all I say, I've been wanting to watch this series for a while, and I just got into them, and I watched the first two, and I loved them. Um, basically, I was inspired to do it because I watched the movie Grotesque a couple days ago, the new Japanese horror film that's causing a lot of this self-inflicted publicity, and it's a horrible movie. I, I absolutely hate Grotesque. It's not shocking. It's not disturbing. It's it's dumb. It's stupid. And it's a piece of pretentious garbage. I watched Lars von Trier's Antichrist and Grotesque this weekend. Grotesque was the more pretentious of the films. That is saying something. I actually really liked Antichrist, but... um. I'll maybe review that next week, but I really want to talk about these films because I love them. Grotesque inspired me to get back with my roots on uh, Japanese extreme horror, and I started looking up some stuff, and um, I grabbed, I don't have it, I watched them all online, but um, the All Night Long films, which I've heard of for a while, and I'm a huge, I know I'm going this, but Dasuki Yachimono, everyone knows who I'm talking about, the guy who directed Red Room, Red Room 2, um, it's like Kiko vs. Rico or something, um, I think he directed Girl Hell. Maybe he might not directed that one, but I know he directed Muzani, and uh, there's another really weird one that he directed. I just can't think of what it is, but um, he is doing sequels to the original trilogy that are coming out in the early 2000s. It was a break. It was 1990, 1992, 95, and then the new ones are coming up in the 2000s. The most recent one is 2005 or six. I can't remember, but uh, let me see. I can. Probably pull it off. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, I might be wrong. It might be earlier than that. Uh, let's see. Um, the newer ones are coming out. Um, they're using the same director. But uh, Yachimono is coming on with them. Uh, oh, 2009, I was wrong. It was 2000, uh, 2002, 2003, and then 2009. Uh, but it, I haven't seen those. They're not released on American uh, DVD anywhere, which kind of sucks. But uh, I have one of my friends in Japan trying to find them for me. Um, the All Night Long films, I haven't seen part three yet, because it's not online, I'll have to buy the set, but it's entirely worth it. Um, the first one was alright. It was really cool, there was a couple of scenes, but it did kind of drag on a lot. Um, but the ending of it was insane. All Night Long 2 is the, the best of them, and it's, it's one of the cruelest films I've ever seen. It starts out, and um, there's this little nerdy kid who's talking to this, this girl online, and, and um, he... Uh, He's, he's like a, a sculptor. He like sculpts these like hentai figures and stuff. And there's this gang of these really sadistic kids that are around him. Um, he's a high schooler. And I, I don't know if they're high schoolers or not. But anyway, um, they're led by this really vicious gay guy. And the gay guy has the hots for him and wants to use him as this like S&M play thing. And basically the way he does that is he pretty much bullies the kid around by using his... He uses his gang to bully the kid around. And um, the kid's too afraid of him to say no, so he pretty much just accepts it. And there's this kind of odd, almost mentor relationship going on between them. But they both they both hate each other, and they both are attracted to each other in various ways. But um, one night, the gang leader has uh, this woman over there who they explain that they, has been drugged and raped by the gang countless times, and now she's of no value to them anymore. They've torn her fingernails out and stuff. And he basically just does whatever he wants to the girl um, and makes the little nerdy kid watch. And then he takes her to a junkyard and throws her in a drum. He's getting ready to set her on fire. He has this blowtorch, um, like a blowtorch lighter, like a one of those like butane um, tri torch things. And um, he, uh, the little nerdy kid, freaks out and he says, "You said I didn't have to be involved in this." So um, the gay guy and his gang leave the kid alone for a little while. And then he starts. Um, they they ruined one of his figures that he's been working on. So he starts rebuilding his figure and he actually completely rebuilds it. Um, they burn it with a lighter, and he, um, he meets, he agrees he's going to meet up with the girl who's been talking to him on the internet, and it turns out it's just these two nerdy guys like him that are hackers and stuff, and they are like, oh, we were just joking with you and stuff like that, and it, at first I thought it was going to be like, eh, well, they're going to be like really sadistic as well, but they weren't, they're actually really cool kids, and, um, they're talking, they're hanging out, and they have a party, and one of them invites his, it's kind of like a girlfriendish 
person. It never really explains what their relationship is. But uh, she comes over, and then the gang members arrive at his house, and they're basically saying, if you give us five, uh, 500 yen, or 5,000 yen, um, we'll leave you alone and stop um, bullying you. And uh, the, the kid, like, he, he says that he can't do it, and they're getting, like, really aggressive, and they're trying to push their way into his house. And they look down, and they see, like, some shoes there, so they realize there's a girl at his house and stuff, and they kidnap him, his... Uh, two nerdy friends they just met and the girl and uh the gay guy is basically going to rape the little nerdy kid and all the other guys they have the two um hackers that were posing as the girl tied up and they actually are just and you don't really know what they do to the girl but it, it, this is one of the probably the, the sickest parts of the movie the, the one of the most disturbing parts was what they were doing to the the, the girl at the front of it um whenever they were going to burn her alive at the, the junkyard. But, um, oh, this review contains spoilers, so if you don't want to, if what I've said intrigues you so far, don't listen to the rest of it because it's full of spoilers. Um, but he, um, the, the gang, whatever it is they do to the girl, you don't see it, but you see the sheets there, and they're covered in blood and shit. It's, it's a hideous film. And um, then the, the gay guy, um, the, the little kid, the nerdy kid tries to pull away from him and he, he burns him like, like right here with that, the lighter. And, um, he's, he, um, he like freaks out of this and you can tell he's kind of, he's possessed these tendencies throughout the movie where he has these flashbacks while he's painting these dolls and stuff of like remembering doing something to this little girl whenever he was a kid. And it never really shows what, but you can tell that he's not entirely stable and there's a reason he's mousy and stuff. And, um, basically one of them, one of them says that he goes too far. Um, and one of the guys that was tied up, he starts, like, cutting onto his face and stuff, and he has these, like, huge, just, like, down his face, and, um, he's, he's laying on the ground dying, and they take the other one, and they tell him that he's gonna have to cut the girl, or they're gonna hit him in the back of the head with a baseball bat, and, um, the guy, he has the knife in his hands, he turns around, and he stabs one of them with it, and then the, the nerdy kid, he, this is whenever he completely loses it, and he grabs, uh, a, he grabs a samurai sword there, and, um, the nerdy kid, and, uh, the hacker that wasn't cut up, they just massacre everyone there, I mean, it's, it's really brutal, it has probably one of the, it has probably one of the grossest bludgeonings I've seen ever since, um, uh, not inside, one of my, irreversible, um, and then, uh, the kid, uh, he, he takes the, the gay guy, the leader of the gang, ties him to the chair and blow torches his face off with his own lighter, and it, it shows every bit of it, it's so gross, um, but it, it's brutal and it's cruel and it's filmed with beautiful cinematography, which is the really weird thing about it. Um, this is really the kind of films that remind me why I love extreme Asian horror because I fell in love with the guinea pigs whenever I was like 14 years old, no joke, 13 or 14, I fell in love with the guinea pig films. Um, I watched them in eighth grade, so that tells you I'm in 12th now, so that was four years, but I watched it early eighth grade, so probably four or five years actually. Um... But I, I absolutely love those films. And um, I haven't really seen anything that's actually a series of films like that. That's given me as much potential as the guinea pig films have. But this is potential. I, I really want to watch all this series now. The first one's good, don't get me wrong. But the second one's just cruel. I mean, it's just... The, the first one's really good. It's it's cruel too, but it's not nearly as cruel as the second one. But um, by now the kid's completely lost it, and uh, it ends, and he uh, he just he kills everyone there, including the the girl and uh, the friends. But uh, it, it ends, and he's you can tell he's completely out of his mind. And I haven't seen the third one. I don't know if the third one involves him, because it's all night long, and then part two is called Atrocity, and part three is called Final Atrocity. So I don't know if the third one involves him or not. I haven't heard anything about it except for just a basic plot outline of a guy kidnaps a girl he's obsessed with. Um, but I don't I don't know if they're related or not. I know the the first two aren't related at all, but, uh, yeah, check out the All Night Long series, you can get them in a, sh um, Tokyo Shock box set, I think it's really cheap, it's like 30 bucks for all three, and they're, they're full-length films, um, they take a while to get going, they really do, but pretty much, in every one of them, there's one really graphic scene, about 20 minutes in, and then the last 20 minutes is just pure brutality, um, so, if you like Asian Extreme, check it out, um, I really, really, really do like these Asian extreme films, like Evil Dead Trap and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a much of a J-horror fan, like, ghost story-wise. I mean, some of them are cool. Like, Narari is a really good film, but uh, if you like extreme Japanese horror, then th these are... If you haven't seen these, then you need to watch them, because they're brutal and some of the cruelest films I've ever 